Hey everyone, in November of 2023, I did my big unboxing video for my Bamboo Labs P1P printer, the base model at the time. It was really comprehensive and I went through a lot of things, but it wasn't very popular on my channel. And I had decided after looking at the analytics for this video that printer videos weren't really for me. The problem is that after a while, I started upgrading this printer as I've been working with it along with FreeCAD converting it into a P1S, as well as adding on AMS. I've documented none of these changes and there's really nothing I can do about it now, but I've also not documented any of the regular maintenance that I do, but that much at least I can fix. So what I'm gonna to do today is capture my general maintenance. I'm also gonna address the issue that causes the belt squeak, and then I'll make some final modifications so I can run TPU as well as AMS at the same time. So let's get started. I've turned the machine around to the rear so I have access to the pulley tensioners and I've also removed the glass cover as well as the AMS connections. It's been unplugged from mains power. Here are the pulley tensioners on the left and the right. They do not do an incredibly good job of keeping the belt balanced. As I bring the print head forwards and back, we could watch the belts rotate. This one starting all the way near the bottom and then bottoming out at the bottom of the pulley as the head comes forward. I pull it back and it comes just off the bottom of the pulley. This is not ideal. The one on the right side, even worse, sitting at the bottom of the pulley almost 100% of the time. Now it said you could gently loosen the screws of both of these, grab the head, bring it all the way forward, all the way back, left and right, and it'll center it, retightening the screws, but it doesn't work. It's also recommended to put a tiny amount of oil on both sides of this pulley if it squeaks, and that could be the problem, but this is the real issue. I'll demonstrate this by loosening the screws on this side using the supplied hex wrench, it'll fit. And I mean loosen, not remove. With it loosened, we could see as I deflect the tensioner slightly how this piece works. There's the top and bottom of the tensioner. Ideally, as it tensions the belt, it should be centering it as well, but it's not. So watch what happens as I push in the bottom of the tensioner and move the head back and forth. The belt starts to ride up on the pulley. Now at some point there's a Goldilocks position here where we're not affecting the tension too much but we've angled it just enough that the belt remains in the center of the pulley just like this. Now that I've demonstrated that I'm going to tighten it to the extent that it will hold the tensioner in whatever position I push it but still be loose enough that I could still pry the tensioner fractions of a millimeter in any direction I want. With a slight tap of the bottom portion of the tensioner, this one adjusted perfectly to the center. So I stopped what I was doing and decided I was gonna tighten this one down for now. There's a very good chance that when I work on the other side, I may need to come back and readjust this side, but for now, we're doing good. And good doesn't mean it stays perfectly in the middle, that's about impossible. What good means is you could go from all the way to the front of the unit and all the way back without the belt hitting the top or bottom of the pulley. I find that to be acceptable. I'll deal with this adjustment now. It'll be the same procedure. Getting a good look now at our before, and I could also hold my ear up to it and hear where the creak is coming from, and it does come from the pulley. We can watch as I go and loosen these bolts as the tensioner drops forward, right there. And again, as I push down on the bottom portion of the tensioner with some dramatic effect, we can see that the belt starts to rise on the pulley. It does take several attempts to get this right. It is more difficult than it looks like in the video. Sometimes I even get it right, but I feel like the pulley is too far in, like there's too much tension on the belt. So I go and restart it. Sometimes it throws the other side out and I have to redo it. But after several minutes, I get it just right. As we see here where the belts are centered within the pulleys, the tensioners are tensioned correctly. They're not pulled back too tight and I've got everything locked down. So I'll jump right into maintenance, starting with the carbon rods, pushing the head all the way to one side, and these do get dirty over time, need to be cleaned. I'm just using a clean paper towel with 99% alcohol, and I'm just going to wipe down these rods from all sides, trying not to get any alcohol on the belts, because alcohol will dry out rubber. So I'll carefully push the belt out of the way to negotiate the paper towel under the rod, so I could clean the underside of that rod. And we can see dirt does collect on it. The bottom rod will then be done in the same fashion. I realized I should have deflected the belt out of the way. I did get the back of the belt a little bit wet this time. A good amount of dirt removed. At this point, the print head will be moved to the clean side. 
with the process repeated all over again. Furthermore, I no longer hear the creak when I previously heard it before cleaning an adjustment. At this point I'll break out my vacuum to collect all the little bits of PLA and PETG and other dust that collects inside the machine. Most of it however is collected under the plate, which I'm going to need to raise, so I've plugged the printer back in, bringing it to the home position with the home button in the second menu option, if only to get everything out of the way for cleaning. It does in fact get pretty dirty under here, so I'm going to vacuum everything out now, and that's good enough. Again, using alcohol and a clean paper towel, I'll be cleaning these metal tracks, having pushed the print head all the way to the back of the printer, avoiding the belt. We can see the dirt collected. Same procedure then conducted on the other side. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. The head is then moved forward so the back of the rails can be cleaned in the same manner. I have a synthetic lubricant that I use for precision oiling. Pushing the head again all the way to the rear, I place a small amount of oil on my finger and then completely coat the bar with it. I then do the same thing on the other side. Once completed, I'll move the head forward and revisiting the first side that I was not able to get because the head was there, I'll put a little more oil on my finger and do that side, followed by the other side, completing this portion. Bringing the menu to the Z-axis adjustment, I'll have the platter come all the way down to the lowest position. Now I have room for a canned air bottle to clean out the fan. I could also remove the front cover of the print head. And again, using canned air, I could clean out the fan to remove any dust or debris that might be lodged in there. I also blow out the rest of the print head, as well as the extruder. Finally, I hit these pulleys over here just to blow out any dust that might accumulate in there, as well as the one on the other side. At this point, I'll remove my PEI texture plate. I'll wash out with dish detergent and warm water. But now I want to raise the platter all the way up with the Z-axis control and using alcohol again with a clean paper towel. I'll wrap the paper towel around this threaded rod and push the Z-control down to clean the rod out of all dirt, debris, and old grease. Stopping intermittently, we can see how much garbage collects on there to use another section of paper towel and continue pushing the Z-axis downward. Stopping again to have a look at the towel and rotate to a clean section. I continue once more, but eventually stopping because my fingers will run out of room. For this, I'll put the paper towel on the most bottom portion, and I should hit the Z-axis, but instead I hit the home button, which I didn't want to do because there's no plate in there and the head is just going to bounce into the heating pad. No harm, but still. This rod is now fully clean of any grease or debris. I use Luberplate Lithium Grease and I'll be applying it all along to the side of the threaded rod. Lowered to distribute with the Z-axis, I'll come back and apply a little bit to the top that was missed, and run the Z-axis up and down several times. The same thing was done on the other side. I repeat the process for the rear rod, which is harder to reach while it's in the home position, doing the exact same process over again. All the old grease and dirt being removed, I'll then have to work from the bottom using the Z-axis downward until my hand runs out of room. And if you've never cleaned this before, you're going to find all sorts of surprises in these threads. The rear one was actually dirty enough, I ended up cleaning it twice. Grease is then applied to this threaded rod just like I did for the first two, then lowering everything down so that I could reach it from the top and apply the grease from the top. Ideally, I should have done these metal rods right here before the threaded rods, but I cleaned them with alcohol very carefully as to not get the newly applied grease on my paper towel. This is then followed by a light amount of oil applied to the rods on both sides. It took a little bit of effort, but we can see all three rods are perfectly cleaned and greased. After any maintenance, a calibration must be done for proper performance, so I go to the calibration and I hit yes. And this one is obviously just for show because I do not have all the stuff I need in place for the normal operation of my printer, notably the glass cover. I'll be redoing this calibration off camera. But now on to my sidecar upgrade for TPU, where AMS is directly connected. I'm going to be using the 4-in-1 adapter provided by Bamboo Labs for about $5. First removing the AMS connection from the printer and letting it hang. My initial idea was to use one of these screws to support the 4-in-1 adapter. Doesn't look like it was entirely made for this setup.
but using just one screw, I could at least screw it in to support it. Then removing this blue clip so that I could adjust the length of the PTFE tube, bringing the tube out just a bit to accommodate the new fitting. It's fully seated and everything seems to be looking okay. The blue tab is then reinstalled. The old adapter is removed from the AMS side and the AMS PTFE tube is installed into one of the connections in the 4-in-1 fitting. As far as the AMS side goes, this project is completed. But I decided to complicate things by going with the side mount spool holder from Codebender. This included the purchase of an AMS Lite rotary spool holder in green, as well as a PC4 M10 fitting. Links to all prints and parts will be provided below. Printing it in PETG for extra support, this print did not go as planned, probably owing to the extreme cold temperature we had that week. We could see it separating in the back as it prints. Then everything just exploded. On the next one, I bolstered the raft, thinking that that would help, and it almost did, but right at the end, it failed again. But this time, I was there to catch it. We could see it detaching right here. But after finally adding another 4 degrees centigrade to the plate heater, Everything worked just fine. The final piece, however, printed without any issues. I've assembled all the main components together and we can see that there's a bit of resistance on the spool holder. And that's to ensure that there is no slack that's formed on the spool. Very nice. But it's not going to fit where the 4-in-1 is mounted, so adjustments are going to need to be made. I'm going to need to remove the 4-in-1 from the printer. Here's the connector that arrived from Amazon. I could only get in a batch of 10 which I will now just screw into the part. It's already threaded, so I could just screw it in by hand. Off to the hardware store, because I need M350 by 16, and with that we can install our part. Of course, the 4-in-1 has already been removed, and these screw sizes are recommended by the person who designed the print, so we know that they're going to fit correctly. And they did. I have a bunch of extra PTFE tube, and I plug one into an available port. The other side measured to size, then scored with a razor, and plugged into the fitting. The 4-in-1 is hanging, though they do have a print to mount it now, and we can see that there is a gentle amount of back pressure on the spool. We do one last inspection, and everything here is looking good till I address the 4-in-1 mount. Skipping ahead, I check to see if the closet just barely clears the printer. That's how I always put it into position. And I slap on a roll just right quick to see that the roll clears the poop container as well as the closet and other things. Looks good. My TPU is drying and ironically, I could have used this unit as the spool holder for the new setup. That was the original idea. Sometime later and we're ready to go with our first print, having dried our TPU. And the diameter of this spool is too large for the spool holder. I've never come across this because I always had that solid bar. But it turns out that the TPU is just not going to work on this spool on this setup. I'll keep it up there to feed it. I haven't fed this manually in a long time. But I'll go down to the feeding menu and hit load. And you can see this is, this is obviously a soup sandwich. This is terrible. I'll tolerate this for the loading portion, but I'm going to need a temporary solution when it comes to printing. But as for the load, we can see that the loading did work fine. Here we see my upgraded nozzle wiper, which is much better in AMS for multicolor. It doesn't bleed colors. Link will be provided in the comment section below. Making my way over to the device configuration, and we can see here that it is set and detected as external spool. I will set that external spool, what type it is. Obviously, we're going to select TPU generic. I'll choose the color, even though it really doesn't matter on the external spool because there's only one spool there. But we'll call it white, even though it's clear. Profile's default, I'll hit confirm. And then I'll slice it with whatever settings they provided. And then I'll just print it. TPU is selected on the external, as we see. I'll unclick Enable AMS. I don't know if I need to, but I just did. Everything looks good, so I'm just going to hit Send. I'll make my way over to the printer so we can have a look. Ironically, I ended up using my dryer to support the filament during this print. But things are looking real good now that maintenance has been done. 
I'm sure I could have fine-tuned these TPU settings, but we're going to take it off the plate and see what we got. Ah, print came out good. Runs TPU and AMS. Mission accomplished. So I've unfed this reel, and I'm going to install the black reel for the next print. And sure enough, it's the same diameter. Had I used their other design with the original holder, none of this would have been an issue, but I didn't want to. Again, I printed using the heater for support. We can see this filament had a bit more moisture in it than the last one. And like everything else, somebody already designed an adapter for this. Link in the comments below. I just lock it into that larger size spool by squeezing it and pressing it all the way in. And then that spool could be mounted with no problem at all. I should have checked for an adapter before the first two prints. But that's good. So now we'll slide it all together and see how it fits. Here's the bottom tray. Fit right in with no problem. As well as our two TPU bottle holders up top. They press right in. Though I could probably glue them into place. Now we can either support a full bottle. Or an empty bottle. With no trouble at all. This is where the tops go. But that concludes this video on my maintenance, my upgrades here, my TPU working with the AMS over here, and everything else. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?